Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we have another Jeffree Star deleted Twitter rant and an update on the Ipsy situation, which I covered in my last video. I'll leave the link for that in the description box below. There's a lot to cover, so let's get into it. So following my previous video where Jeffree called out Ipsy for selling counterfeit Jeffree Star Cosmetics Beauty Killer eyeshadow palettes, which resulted in a deleted Twitter rant, he went on yet another rant the same day, which has also been deleted. Side note with respect to Ipsy, as I said, Said in my previous video, Jeffrey provided an update at the end of his rant and said that Ipsy had removed the counterfeit item from their site and emailed him. They also responded to comments in the thread of Jeffrey's initial tweet advising that they had removed the product from their site while they investigate further. However, this does not appear to be an isolated incident as they were also selling counterfeit Morphe and Jaclyn Hill palettes from Melante Beauty, which is the same company the counterfeit Beauty Killer palette came from. I know that Melante Beauty sells an array of counterfeit brands and beauty products, but it's hard to believe a company like Ipsy made the mistake of offering a counterfeit item on their site not once, but twice that we're aware of anyway. You can't tell me Ipsy doesn't know exactly what the tea is, yet here they are, playing the real life version of Clue trying to catch Michelle Phan in the conservatory with the counterfeit beauty killer palette, okay? The counterfeit beauty killer palette and the counterfeit Morphe and Jaclyn Hill palette have both been removed from Ipsy's site. However, when the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill palette was live on their site, listed under the About This product section was the following description. This item is a special order and may take 15 to 30 business days for delivery. Melante Beauty items are non-refundable and will be shipped to you directly from the... And I didn't catch the rest, but I imagine it said the item will be shipped directly from their warehouse. This is particularly interesting because Melante Beauty lists the same description under their special order section, which in my opinion further strengthens my belief that Ipsy knew exactly where these products were coming from and that they were counterfeit. Another point of interest is that following Jeffrey's call out, Melante Beauty has removed all counterfeit items from their site and provided this statement. Dear valued customers and brands, due to recent concerns that have been brought to our attention, we have decided to discontinue our special order items. We do so in an abundance of caution and to allow the necessary time to review the concerns expressed by some of our beloved customers. These concerns are limited to packaging, designs, and other intellectual property concerns only. We will make every effort to ensure that our products meet the highest standards as part of our commitment to our customers. However, as stated on our website, the special order details detail page, we do not assume responsibility for any items that do not carry the Melante Beauty trademark, as the special order items were not designed, produced, stocked, or manufactured by Melante Beauty. We have great respect for all brands, international and domestic, as well as the time, care, and effort that goes into the production of an item related to beauty or cosmetics. We hope that these concerns have been addressed, and we look forward to bringing our customers other new and exciting products that are worthy to carry the Melante Beauty mark. So they've voluntarily decided to remove all special order items, also known as counterfeit items, from their site simply out of an abundance of caution and nothing to do with the fact that it's illegal to sell same. Sure, Jan. Now, I will give credit where it's due, although I'm sure Melante Beauty will start up selling counterfeit items again, likely under a different name, because that's what these companies do. But being that Jeffrey made this issue so public, he's helped stop the bleed of counterfeit makeup sales at two sources, even if it's only temporarily. So that's a positive. Anyway, there's your update on that situation, but back to Jeffrey's second deleted rant du jour. And let me just say, Mr. Star is really making your girl work for these deleted tweets. I can barely keep up with the tweet and delete bandit, but round two began when he announced that he was having a meet and greet with Morphe at the grand opening of their new store in Rancho Cucamonga at Victoria Gardens. He announced the meetup via Snapchat, which I'll include here for those interested. I know some of you have said that you like that I include full snaps, and others have said that you prefer that I didn't include them, so for those who don't care to watch, you can simply skip through. However, the tweet I'm going to show right after correlates to the snap, so you may want to watch this one. In other news, I have something to tell you guys. Okay, so if you are in the 909 area in South County, I will be doing a meet and greet this Saturday in Rancho Cucamonga at the new Morphe Brushes store at Victoria Gardens. Now, I used to shop at Victoria Gardens all through high school because I am from Orange County. Um, so I would travel a lot and go to Mission Viejo, San Bernardino, you know, I was all over the place um, when I was a kid, but uh, this is like such a surreal moment that I have a huge gondola and all the Morphe stores opening up. So if you didn't know, my brand is sold on morphebrushes.com and it's in all of their stores. So 
Um, I know they have Brian now. They have one in Valley Fair. Now they have Victoria Gardens. They have one in Bur Burbank. So Morphe is not slowing down. Um, so if you did not know, you can purchase my entire makeup brand from all of their locations opening up. So to celebrate Morphe's new store location at Victoria Gardens, I'm doing a big meet and greet this Saturday from 11 a.m. to 1.30. We will post all of the details soon. I had to post the store front. It is so cool to see um, just everything growing for Morphe and the brand expanding and the fact that they asked my brand to come along for the ride with them. Now, you guys know I have done no retail stores in America. So, um, you know, it was a big deal to agree and do this. And I couldn't imagine partnering with anyone else because the owners of Morphe and I bonded very early on in my makeup career. So I am really excited for this weekend to celebrate. So who am I going to see in the 909 this weekend? Jeffrey then follows his snap by tweeting out, Hey Rancho Cucamonga, California. See you this Saturday at Victoria Gardens meet and greet at the Morphe Brushes store grand opening. Vivian responds to his tweet and says, Love you JS and follow you on snap. Just a little correction since I'm from Upland, California. Rancho is not in Orange County, it's San Bernardino County. See you there. Jeffrey replies to Vivian and says, I'm very aware boo, lol. I'm stoned and being funny. I was raised in 714, 909 is also close and home. Now I know this is insignificant but it sounds like Jeffrey made a geographical mistake which is totally fine. It happens. To be honest I couldn't tell you what city belongs to what region in my own neighborhood but why does he need to add that he's stoned and being funny? I'm sure he was stoned but he wasn't quote unquote trying to be funny. I didn't get that impression at all from that snap. It was a tiny mistake plain and simple and yes possibly due to the fact that he was high but why not just say that and leave it there. Instead he made it seem like it was intentional because he couldn't admit that he made a stupid mistake. In my opinion, it's little things like these which again are so insignificant that it makes me wonder how many significant issues he's lied about and listen. If you guys believe him, that's totally okay. You definitely don't have to agree with me here or anywhere else for that matter. These are just my thoughts and they'd be the exact same even if Jeffrey and I were on good terms. Anyway, after Jeffrey announced his meetup on Twitter, I don't know if this guy, which we'll call Mike, responded to his tweet or if Jeffrey happened to come across it on his own because I was not able to find the original but Mike tweeted if you're a rancho wannabe gangbanger Jeffree Star is going to be at Victoria Gardens Saturday if you're trying to catch your first body. Jeffrey quote tweets his tweet and says hey at FBI can you please investigate this person very disturbing and I'm at a loss for words at this one. Now let me just say that although this tweet wasn't a direct threat towards Jeffrey I'd be concerned too especially these days you never truly know and you can never be too careful. However I wouldn't tweet at the FBI FBI. If I felt like I was in any kind of danger, especially with a meetup on the horizon, I'd go directly to the police, file a report, and explore my options. I personally didn't interpret this particular tweet as a death threat per se. I'd be way more concerned about the next tweet. So Danielle responds to Mike's tweet and says, I want him dead. Now if I were going to tag the FBI, this would be the one I'd do so on, but Jeffrey replies to Danielle and says, you want me dead? How fucking disturbing. Stay away from me. I would have to agree. This is is disturbing. Even if this was some sort of joke on Danielle's behalf, there are things you just don't joke about. This is one of them and I would take this very seriously, especially considering he's a public figure. Like him or not, this is not okay. Moving on. Someone else who will call K quote tweets Jeffrey's tweet to the FBI and says ha ha ha. K continues on by tweeting, shocking that we're in 2018 and people still look up to Jeffrey Star. Jeffrey responds to K's tweet and says, you laugh at death threats, you're a piece of shit human. K then tweeted, I laughed because Jeffrey tagged the whole ass FBI in his tweet and now I have people coming for me in my mentions, RIP. Bear with me here because there were a few conversations happening simultaneously and I've tried to organize them to the best of my ability. So this next person who will call Alex also quote tweets Jeffrey's FBI tweet and says, I'm fucking dead LMAO. I don't feel one ounce of sympathy. Jeffrey Star has a past of racist behavior and I just don't stand that. Jeffrey replies to Alex and says, 
You laughed at someone making a death threat about me. Therefore, you will forever be a piece of shit. Stop trying to validate how disgusting your thoughts are. Alex then replies to Jeffrey and says, We don't stand racists in 2018, Jeffrey, so yes, I am off to a positive start in 2018. Alex continued on by attaching a screenshot of Maya's tweet, I guess, to support her claims, which said, Never forget Jeffrey Star calling a girl a N-word repeatedly before getting the video taken down. Alex's quote on Maya's tweet, which was in response to Jeffrey, was, Never did I agree with the apparent death threats. But, sure you aren't. That's why your BFF Kim K had to come to your rescue when you were accused of being racist. What kind of piece of shit human says slash does things like this, huh? You willingly use the N-word, have a past with racism, need I go on? I can live with that because you will forever be a piece of shit to me too. Alex ended off by tweeting to her own followers saying, Nothing is more funny than seeing his followers at me in the attempted quote-unquote drag her sis posts. Isn't it funny that he's willing to give me more attention than his actual followers? Meanwhile, Jeffrey was engaging in another conversation. So, Jeffrey tweeted out, 909, what's good? Saturday is gonna be amazing. Someone who will call Jay quote tweets this and says, You not welcomed in the hood. To which Jeffrey responds with, You guys, get ready for this one. Stop trying to fuck me, not interested, little boy. Now, I looked far and wide, you guys. I was on this shit as it was happening. I even went on the Wayback Machine Girl and there was no evidence of this dude making any sort of pass at Jeffrey. All of this has of course been deleted, but what you see here is exactly how everything unfolded. So Jay responds to Jeffrey and says, Ka said don't fuck him, dot dot dot, I'm going to sleep. Is Ka short or slang for cousin? I don't know. Anyway, Jay then attaches a pic of Jeffrey's stop trying to fuck me response to his tweet and says, Mentions being destroyed by an N-word with makeup on and all his makeup goons, LMAO. Oh my god, okay. So I've noticed a pattern with Jeffrey where he'll respond to a tweet or a comment saying something totally unrelated to the topic at hand to get his fans all fired up so they go and attack the person. He did it to me and I've seen him do it to others over and over again. He knows exactly what he's doing. He pulls the pin, throws the grenade, and has his fans do his dirty work for him while he takes cover. He knows that his fans will harass the person on the other end incessantly, making their life a living hell over something that he fabricated in his own mind for this very purpose. These next tweets are just random deleted tweets. So Meg says, Jeffree Star is trash just like his makeup, LMAO. Y'all obsessing over nothing. Jeffrey replies and says, Yet here you are still talking about me, stupid bitch, ha ha ha. Meg replies and says, Dude, he actually replies. Jeffrey replies once again and says, Dude, like, oh my god, fun fact of the night, you are the piece of shit. Next, Maggie says, Jeffree Star is literally the fucking worst. The fucking worst. Jeffrey replies to Maggie and says, But you're a piece of shit, so I'm confused, sis. Thanks for the shout out, demon. Jeffrey ended his rant by saying, I know dragging me is fun for some people, but death threats are never funny. If you think they are, you should not be allowed near other humans. This is something I agree with. Death threats are no joke. And listen, I know people are going to say, well, if people come for Jeffrey, he has the right to defend himself. And I agree to an extent. I just find it interesting that everyone else is a piece of shit human or a demon. And to be honest, every influencer has haters, okay? But I've never seen one react the way he does and go so far as to manipulate the meaning behind what someone says intentionally so that his fans go after the person so he can sit back in his Gucci tracksuit and loafers and enjoy the show. Another pattern I've noticed with Jeffrey is that he'll go on a Twitter rant, get people going, delete the rant, play victim, and then the man turns into Oprah and starts giving away cameras, laptops, iPhones, and his entire makeup collection and it almost seems like the sole purpose of these giveaways is to try and make up for his shitty behavior. It's just weird and I'm gonna say this but look at the winners of a lot of his giveaways and tell me what a lot of them have in common. I'm sorry but it gives me ulterior motives vibes. This point will lead into my next video but for now I'll leave you with this which is a treasured gem of mine. If you had the fucking balls to tweet that in your mansion, you should have the balls to keep it up on your motherfucking Instagram. Or Twitter. Have you noticed these patterns? Do you think Jeffrey has the right to speak to people like this? And just a reminder for those who like to tell me that I'm obsessed with Jeffrey, as long as he's involved in the drama, I'm gonna report on it. Go talk to the channel that has 76 Jeffrey videos. Anyway, you guys, that is it for this video. I have kind of like a continuation to this video coming up, but thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Here for the T2. And I'll talk to you guys again soon in my next video. Bye.